Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial, and I have no idea what to call this. So if you have any uh, suggestions, just put them in the comments below. But what we're creating is an effect that will automatically, as I add a mask to this text layer, create these connected lines and dots. So let's do a new composition. That's kind of how you always start it. So text dots, we can call this. And then a solid to go behind it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is gonna create a text layer. Doesn't really matter the font or anything, just find one that you like. And I'm gonna create a just a period. Let's make it nice and big so we can see it. And things that we're gonna wanna have is we want to have the line spacing set to zero. I'm actually gonna set this up to uh, some pixels right now just so we can see what's going on and this is going to use a similar technique that I used in my last tutorial about creating strokes around text multiple strokes so there's two parts to this expression or to this look there's an expression in the source text and there's an, some text animators that is using the expression selector and I'm gonna get right into it and hopefully by the end of this you're gonna understand how the expression selector works a little bit better but we also need to create a mask on this. So as I'm building this, I'm just gonna have just a garbage mask, something on here so I can see one, two, three, four, five, right? Five points I just created because we need that data to kind of drive what we're doing. So the first thing is we're gonna go into the source text and we're gonna type out uh, T path. We're gonna create an, exp or an expression and a variable T path is we wanna bring in the path, the mask path, right? So make sure that mask is open up. T path equals like for this path, bring in that path and we're creating a variable. And then we go T path dot points. And that's going to number, you know, it's gonna define the points and then we're gonna go length dot length that's going to count out how many points there are. Now we need to apply this to a variable too. So we're gonna call this one T amount equals. All right, so now we have we brought in the path, we set it to an amount of points. So this is counting how many points there are. And then we need to go T text for this text equals, and I'm going to pick whip my source text. And then to that, I'm gonna have a plus because I want to add to it a line break and in After Effects expressions a line break is using uh, in quotations do a backslash and a lowercase r and what that is is it's like all right this variable here t text store it as the current piece of text you have in there plus a line break and then finally we're going to go t text dot repeat and it's going to repeat it and how many times do we want to repeat it we want to repeat it t amount times and end with a semicolon and you can see how many are there there's five of them and five points just to double check that it's working if we add another point to this mask you can see it is adding more perfect now we do have one little problem though, is if I were to take away this mask, the thing errors out, right? So we need to put in some logic to make it so it doesn't do that. And in After Effects, there's something called the try catch loop. And it's kind of like an if then statement, just works a little different. So instead of saying if you put try, so like try this code, right? It's curly bracket, and it's trying all of this code end with a curly bracket, and if you catch an error, so catch, in parentheses, ERR, then do something else. So if this code produces an error, do something else. And what we're gonna do is just gonna output the value, the current value that was already there. So just put value and end with a curly bracket. And that's the code, right? And so let's see, if I were to get rid of that mask, it's not doing anything, but it's also not giving me an error. That's exactly what we want. So that's the first step, is using that path to drive how many repetitions we are creating from this text. Now I need to go in here to the line space, make sure that's set to zero again, because we want them all to be just in the same spot. 
Okay, the next thing we need to do is we're going to now distribute these across the screen space based off of where these points are, right? And so we're gonna do that with expression selectors on the position data. So let's give this animator a name. Did you know you can rename these animators so they're just not animator one and two or whatever. You can rename them to make them more sense. So that's like dot position, right? And I'm gonna take away that range selector and then add to it an expression selector. Let's make sure we have a little more space so we can see what we're doing. In the expression selector, there's two areas that we're gonna add some expressions to. One is to the position and one is in the amount. There's already some expressions in here. So, but to the position, what we need to do is I, this needs to be basically your composition size, right? So 1920 by 1080. So in square brackets, I'm going to do this comp dot width by this comp dot height. And what you see is it goes 1920 by 1080. It just automatically builds it. And you can see what's happening is it's distributing these dots across the way. And that's kind of your first hint on how the expression selector works. It's what it's going to do is it's going to drive this position of a, a total of 1920 by 1080. So it'll go from zero to 1920 by 1080. That's the biggest optimal, that, that's the biggest potential it can do, right? But it's gonna do that based off of what's in this expression. Um, somewhere between zero and 100. And so we need to output a number that is a, a ratio or an average of that. So we need to create a percentage for each point along this grid. And so that's basically, you have to just divide it by 1920 or divide it by 1080. It's really kind of a simple way of doing it. So let's delete that. And then to this, we're gonna do some very similar expressions. Again, let's start with that try catch again, right? Try, and we're gonna try a block of code. In this code, we're gonna do that same T path. And in there, let's bring in that path again, just like we did before. The next part of it is that we're gonna do T points, and we're going to make some points, right? We're gonna be able to define all of these points and know where their position is. And then have that equal, and then T path dot points with parentheses. And then to be able to know which point we're talking about is a square bracket. So if I put in here a zero, it's looking at the first point. If I put a one, it's looking at the second point, right? But we want it to be able to look at all of the points but kind of just iterate through them based off of what text we're looking at, which character we're looking at. And so to do that, we're gonna put in text index. Now, the tricky thing with this is sometimes your index in After Effects is going, like your, your initial index is zero, sometimes your initial index is one. And so these path points are looking for initial index of zero, this text index is outputting a one, so we just, have to minus one on this. Do another semicolon after that. And then lastly, we need to put out a variable of three values because you can see here there's 100 comma 100 comma 100. So in square brackets, we're gonna, you know, we need an X, Y, Z, right? For the Z value, we just put a zero. For X, we're gonna take the X position of those points and divide it by 1920. So we go T points, and then for that initial position, do zero, divide that, and I'm just gonna pick whip that 1920, and then let's do the same thing for the Y value, T points. This time, instead of a zero, let's do a one. Divide that, this time by the, by the 1080, and then because it is a percentage, we need to then times the whole thing by 100 again to bring it back up to the proper space. Okay, and then just like we did with the other one, let's write catch error curly bracket and then value. And there we go. You see, you see what it did there? It just distributed these across the space based off of where that's at. And this is cool because 
I can come in here and add another one. And every time I add a point, it'll just automatically put that dot right where it's at. Now we do have a little bit of an issue, which is text is hardly ever centered properly. You can see it's not right where we want it to be, but that's easy enough to fix. We just go into these animators. Let's add another position to this. Um, this time, let's put it up above it. And then we can, I'm gonna just zoom in real close. And it's probably something like, yeah, I'm going to just kind of center that. So nine, negative 2.5, maybe just negative two. All right. So now that's kind of right where it's supposed to be on the dots. So then lastly, let's add a stroke to this. And this is just an effect. And if we come into effect, generate, then down to stroke, then it, you can have these connecting it. Now, one thing you will see is this stroke is going on top of those dots and we want it to go underneath it, right? So if we do a CC composite, it'll composite that on top, right? And so now we have these dots on top of that stroke. So a couple of other things that we're gonna wanna do, well, really just one, is right here in the stroke, make sure all mask is checked because then what happens is we can uh, delete the mask. And then if we add another one again, it will automatically update it. If that was not checked, then um, it may not work, right? Just uncheck that. Right, yeah. See, it's not automatically finding it. But if you have all mass checks, then it automatically will find it. So that's how you do that. There's some other stuff you can do to this. Like, because it's how it is, we can uh, add some just layer styles to it. If we want to add it, you know, like an inner shadow or... You can add a stroke this way if you want. I mean, that's not extremely amazing looking, but it's pretty cool looking. So I hope you uh, learned some cool stuff here. Now, one thing I will do, put these expressions down in the description below. I usually just, you know, have you guys watch it and kind of figure it out because I don't do a lot of really big expressions, but this time I've got some more complex expressions. So I did want to show those in the description below. Here they are, you can look at them here or just copy them from down there. You're gonna have to change up things, you know, like your mask, make sure it's pointing to the right thing, but this is what we're working with. I hope you learned some good stuff, and if you can help me out, I don't know what to call this, and uh, hopefully we can figure out a good name for it. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.